And there came a day, a day like no other, when the horror genre stood threatened by the forces of evil. On that day, the horror show with Brian Keene was born. Brian Keene, Mary San Giovanni, Dave Thomas, Matt Wilderson, along with occasional co-hosts Kelly Owen, Phoebe, and Dungeon Master 77.1, these ambassadors of horror stand at the door bringing you the biggest names in the business, as well as tomorrow's superstars. Now, here they are, The Horror Show with Brian Keene. Okay, and we are back. This is actually take two. You listeners will not get to hear take one because uh, 40 minutes into the original recording of the show, Brian figured out that he wasn't actually recording anything on Skype. So... Hi, Brian Keene here with you, Professor Mary San Giovanni, Kelly Owen, Dave Thomas, and Matt Wilderson. Say hello again, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Kelly, did you have these kind of uh, technical problems with uh, Corona Con, COVID Con over, over the past weekend? No, no, actually, it was the opposite. I hit record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 and it didn't work because. Um, I had actually, because the, the backend program that I was using, you link it to your YouTube and I had linked it to my YouTube and then I, and it was all me. Okay. For everybody who was wondering about those technical difficulties, all me. Um, so I had linked it to my YouTube and we had advertised all week long and I got there and I hit record and I forgot that I had created on my YouTube, a branded identity to, ta- to attach it to and forgot to redirect it to that one. So when I hit record, it wouldn't go because it was waiting for Kelly Owen to show up instead of Kelly Owen Brand. Uh, yeah. So we ended up having to move the link real quick everywhere and had a good time. And, hey, it was fun because adventure happens. Well, I thought you did great for seven and a half hours. Um, I mean, you know, Dave and I can, and, and Mary as well, we can attest doing those 24-hour telethons. I mean, we're talking the whole time, but just the – technical behind the scenes aspect is, is oh, yeah. exhausting so yeah because you're babysitting the scrolling text on the side and you're and the the green room as i was calling it shows me who's in the wings so i i have to pay attention to who i'm putting in who i'm taking out you know muting you when i need to uh you know yeah, let's, <laughs> let's talk about that um you know uh halfway through the through the broadcast uh you know Mary is, of course, isolated in New Jersey. I'm isolated down here in Pennsylvania. I haven't seen her in 40 days as of today. And uh, we're flirting during the, the convention, as we would at a normal convention. And Kelly mutes me. <laughs> yep. What the hell? Yep. yep. Absolutely. You know why? Why? Because there are certain topics I'm done with, okay? Your sex life is one of them. But how else were we supposed to talk? FaceTime, bitch, without us. We face we FaceTime every day. I, in fact, I FaceTime Mary yesterday from uh, a porta potty. I know you did. Oh my god, that was love lame. is in the yeah. air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Romance Mary. isn't dead, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> am, am, am I kidding? Did I did I or did I not FaceTime you from a porta potty? Oh, no, absolutely. But I think you need to explain this in context. Here, we were looking for ways for me to come home now. When we talked about me coming home, I figured I'd stay in the house and Brian might, you know, put himself someplace else for a while uh, so I could rebond with my cat. But his plan was to put me in somebody else's RV and then without a bathroom down the street to use a public porta potty when I needed to go to the bathroom. It's not down the street. It's like one field away. That's the one down at the park, right? Right. <laughs> That's a quarter yeah. of the mile down the fucking road. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to risk dysentery on top of everything else. I don't want to be a part of that. Mary, get, get busy of- hovering. Girl, get busy dying. <laughs> <laughs> this is love, people. Love. You can come home and stay in the neighbor's RV and you can pee down there. But she can be home. You know what? Or- she, can, she, can stay, she can stay in the house. I'll stay in the RV. I love this feel. idea. Well, you there could have this key outside. You would need to be in the porta potty. Can we put a webcam in there? Yeah, absolutely. In the porta potty? No, in in the RV. <laughs> 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 
I think it's already on you for me. Pay extra for it. <laughs> this has gone horribly <laughs> awry. Yeah, this is going. This is just insane. This, this is the I sort of the sort of scintillating commentary <laughs> that we did not get on CoronaCon. <laughs> no, no, no. CoronaCon was readings and panels, and 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 I think it went really well. And things that we talked about already, I'm just going to recap because now that we've hit record, they're not going to sound organic. <laughs> <laughs> Matt just sprayed coffee all over. Yeah, that was that was That's impressive. Golf. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's gonna die now. Yeah. Uh, I was inundated with uh, requests and thoughts and ideas and crazy people thinking we should do this once a month. Because no, calm your butt down. Um, I have enough people on the short list to do at least two more. Whether or not I do them during con season, as cons are canceled i don't know it may become a yearly thing to do in the winter in the off con season because winter's already depressing and then you tell these people they can't see any of their friends for seven months yeah you know the dead of winter might be january might be a good time to do it right i agree sounds like a good idea it'll probably be something like that but there might be another one this summer just because this is this the whole covid thing is such a punch in the gut Mm-hmm. And, it, and it was why we did it in the first place, because when they canceled Wisconsin, there was a small group of us in a in a group text. Um, and I'm not going to say who, but w- one of our close friends battles with depression anyway. And this just bottomed him out. You know, now I don't get to go anywhere. Now I don't get to see anybody. And I was like, well, I mean, we'll just do something live, whatever. We'll just go read live. You'll get to see faces at least. And I think that a lot of people who do suffer <laughs> what came up your driveway <laughs> is it my driveway I'm telling um, you it's the bob alarm he's within 10 feet he's within 10 feet get away <laughs> it's, it's Bob's the near <laughs> it's the porta potty door I was just in the kitchen looking out here like we were crazy when we were starting over <laughs> I'm sure he thought I just heard you talk for 25 he's minutes he's like there's a glitch in the matrix <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that the people who normally suffer are having a really, really hard time with this. And I think that people who don't normally suffer are learning what it's like. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. is awful. So yeah, anything we can do to help our fellow man, that's like actually what we're supposed to do right now. Not be a dick, but be a good human. Well, we're Kelly, I said it online and I'll say it here. I'm real proud of you. I think you did a great job. You did a great thing. It was obviously very, very popular. Um, for listeners who missed it, um, it is available on your YouTube page. Uh, it, and, and like it's in your Twitter feed and your Facebook feed, et cetera, right? Yeah. Kelly, it got easy- comments on there. There is a short Earl. It's B I T dot L Y forward slash COVID. Con one, not how I made it a one. Numerical one, not O N E. Yeah, just a one. Okay, just a numerical one. But yeah, it is everywhere. All right, awesome. Uh, so and we and- made a Facebook group for it, and there was you know contests and things like that. So I mean, it was it was fun. It was and insane, all was all seven and a half hours is available right now. People can watch it at their leisure. Yep, yep. Okay. and they can watch the insane feed as it was going if they want to. If they want to listen here and look over here. There's a the entire chat window is also available. Yeah, I went back and read through the chat window because oh god, cause, it was a good time. Cause, well, because Mary said that you know I that I remain popular with the ladies in my old age, and I didn't believe her, so I went and looked back through the chat window, and I, don't, I saw a lot of love for Jans, not so much for me. I for <laughs> me, it was more like oh, look at the sweet old man. <laughs> <laughs> You notice he went back to read the chat to feed his own narcissism. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, you'll notice and, I didn't and here's my out. shocked face. I didn't point out the comments <laughs> people were making about Jans. I, I was trying to to help him feed his narcissism in other ways. You know what? I get it. Him. I get it. I you know, if if I was twenty years younger, I'd be all about Jans too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then there's the other group of women who are all going can Bob call me every night and just read me a story to sleep? <laughs> Why not? We're going to make a 1-900 number. I'm not even joking. Yeah, I'm a PayPal to- or something. For, two minutes, yeah. uh, for $2 a minute, he will talk to you while you fall asleep. 
<laughs> I would do that where I could. You know, I think we should do this. Brian would be my first subscription. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, while that was going on, Matt, you uh, you also you posted the second uh, episode of an evening with Victor Ravenscroft, did you not? Yes, yes, I did. That was uh, seven o'clock that evening. I yeah, guess it's standard time. <laughs> are, that, are you en- are you enjoying doing those? I am. I am. I'm having a lot of fun doing them. Uh, I hope people are enjoying them. I'm not really hearing much uh, feedback back about them, but I hope people are enjoying them because. Uh, it's a good bit of work putting that together. It's probably yeah. like four or five hours an episode, like of editing, mixing music, you know, fixing my voice up and all that stuff. So, okay. Well, yeah. we hope folks will check them out. If you do check them out, reach out and let Matt know what you thought. Um, I guess the big thing we should talk about this week uh, is the Stoker Awards. The 2019 Bram Stoker Award winners were announced. That was also this weekend. It was a very busy weekend for the genre. Yes. Um, now, as we do on this show every year, if you are a new listener, uh, for the past six years, we do this little thing where we try to predict who we think will win the award. Um, and then we compare it to the actual list of winners. Uh, and whichever one of us got the most correct guesses, we, we get to give a free ad on this show to whomever we pick. Um, so Kelly, do you have our, our tally there from who we I picked? Do. So if anybody hears this, that's the sound of me finding whatever category he's talking about. Okay. So do we, let's start. Do we remember, sorry. Do we remember who won last year? Was it Mary? Uh, Mary it was Mary. Year. Yeah. yeah okay. And she gave the ad to, I believe it was Kristen Dearborn or Summer Cannon. One of them. I can't remember which. I think so. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. Honestly. I'm not used to winning anything. <laughs> here, here. Apparently, we're going to win the porta potty lottery. So, uh, you know, good, to, good luck with that. So are <laughs> Dysentery you start, lottery. Are you going to start at the bottom and work up to novel, or are you going to start at the top and go down? What is easier for you? What uh, my list is different than the original list you were doing, so I got to right. jump on anyway. All right, let's start with superior achievement in a poetry collection. Got uh, it. The winner was Linda Addison and Alessandro Manzetti for The Place of Broken Things. How many of us correctly predicted that? Exactly one. And who was that? Dave. Dave. All right. So Dave on the board with one point. Dave got that. I have to fix my thing here real quick. Sounds fairly dirty. (laughs) Okay. So Dave got one. All right. Superior mm. achievement in short nonfiction. Got uh, it. The winner, the win, the winner, <laughs> the winner <laughs> was uh, Gwendolyn Keist for Magic, Madness, and Women Who Creep: The Power of Individuality in the Work of Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Ryan and Dave. Yes. Suck wow. on that, Dave. I'm nipping really? right at your heels. Really? You got yeah. excited for that one? Yeah. <laughs> it feeds my narcissism. So easily excited at this point. Oh Christ! <laughs> I just love that Matt's window has the portrait mode on, so the back is fuzzy, so he looks ethereal. With his, with, he, and he's got like a bit of a Bond villain thing going on with the dark oh, clothes of the dog in his lap. But it's it's also blurred, so now he's got this ghost dog going on. Oh, I, just, dog. I just took a, a screenshot of it, so I'll put it on the uh, <laughs> on, on our YouTube. <laughs> Not the rest of us, just him. Oh, there okay. we go. Now I'm superior. Wait, now I'm getting one of Kelly blowing her nose. Really? Uh, I superior didn't achievement. Like Superior achievement in nonfiction. Uh, the winner was Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson for Monster She Wrote, The Women Who Pioneered Horror and Speculative Fiction. Every single one of us called that one. Okay. Yeah, suck oh, on wow. that, Dave. Oh, boy, yeah. <laughs> so, <I'm> too behind. <laughs> currently, Dave is in the lead with three, and each, the rest of us each have one point, correct? Yeah, well, you, you have two. You have two. Oh, I have two. Okay. Right. See, Beating this, the this narcissism. Is, 
Yeah. This is why we let Kelly do the math. Um, <sighs> superior achievement in an anthology. The winner was Ellen Datlow for Echoes, the saga anthology of ghost stories. That's going to be. Hmm. Now, how do you want to do this? I called that, but we have a note here that Mary was ambivalent, couldn't make up her mind. She thought it would be Twisted Book of Shadows, but if not, then it would be Echoes. Did we give her a point? Maybe half uh, a point. Half and we a just point. tell her, in the future, make up your mind. I say, I go with half a point. <laughs> yeah, half a point is okay. So Mary gets half a point. That's going to look great in the tally. All right. Who's going to win by that half a point? <laughs> by the way, I, I, I win by half a point. One. Ha! I'm now tied with you, Keen. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Let's see what happens next. Okay. Uh, superior achievement in a screenplay. The winner was Jordan Peele for Us. <laughs> Brian? Oh, yep. Yeah. Mary and Matt. Yay! So now Ooh. Brian and Dave are tied, and the three of us are tied. Okay. It's close. All right. Close, folks. Close men. Close men. I'm right. just happy that Garbage Ass Midsummer didn't win. So that's all I care about. Right? <laughs> here, here. It's not a smart movie. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so here's some shit for you. I haven't even seen it. You know why? Because the Fords, all three of them in my little Corona team, they all watched it without me one day. Because, and I quote, well, we knew you'd hate it. <laughs> they got done watching it and went, "Yeah, please don't watch that because we have to live with you." I don't get all I don't get all the hate for it. I, I enjoyed the film. Uh, it's nothing new. It's nothing groundbreaking. You know, it's it's the Wicker Man for a new generation. But yeah, it, it was it was a fine two hours, and I thought uh, the lead actress. I thought she gave one hell of a performance. She's oh, yeah, great. She's the movie. Great. The movie is absolutely beautiful to look at. I saw it in a theater, but it's the most goddamn predictable thing I've ever seen, and it's not smart. People acting like it's the smartest thing ever made. Are idiots. No, it's okay. not smart. Yeah, so what but... you're saying is put it on, mute it, watch the cinematography, and don't listen to a word. Um, no, you, no, listen to listen it. To just it. don't just don't, don't expect don't anything. expect it to be the greatest it. thing since the invention of the toaster, because it's not. It's not even close. So it's Freddie Prince Jr. Scooby Doo. It's it's well, I wouldn't have I there's no way I could sit through that. But um you know <laughs> I I have said this before. The, the, this is a person that made Hereditary and, and made this. I want to see him direct something that somebody else writes. Yeah, I didn't like Hereditary. I, oh, I liked Hereditary. I, Hereditary, I liked this one. I didn't like, but I would like to. I'd like to see like, direct something from somebody else. It's someone, oh. someone else's script. Because All I, right, well, I, let's I, stop talking about the loser. Okay. Awesome. I, just, I just had my awesome rant that I wrote up that Brian had to read, and I was very happy. So, you know, when I. You guys can keep going. I got to let my dog out. She's crossing her legs. Okay. Okay. All right. You let the dog out. Matt did. Ah, woo, that woo, woo, woo. I love it. Does it jump up and down on one? All right. Superior achievement in a fiction collection. The winner was Paul Tremblay for Growing Things and Other Stories. Wait a minute. Oh, collection. Got it. What was it? Tremblay? Paul Tremblay. Woohoo! Every single one of us got that one. Okay. We knew that that was the bestest. Okay. Uh, superior achievement in short fiction. The winner yep. was Gwendolyn again. She's having a hell of a year with the Stokers uh, for her story, The Eight People Who Murdered Me, excerpt from Lucy Westerna's Diary. Mary. And Dave, who is now winning. Okay. All right. Um, so Dave is in the lead. Dave is in the lead. Yeah. And then Keen and I are tied, I think, right? Nothing after first place matters, honey. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting a participation award. It's not going to happen. Mary, when you, when you get home. Stop I will, it. I, I can't mute you. Stop. I will tie you when you get home, baby. Oh, my. In the portal. Don't worry, body. Kelly. I get to edit this. I, like I can that participation him. trophy. <laughs> Huzzah! 
Giggity. Oh, you're All right. Uh, superior achievement in long fiction. The winner, Victor Lavalle, up from slavery, uh, from Weird Tales magazine. And again, every single one of us. Okay. We're pretty good. Uh, good superior this. achievement in a graphic novel. The winner was Colleen Dorn and Neil Gaiman for Snow Glass Apples. Yay, Gaiman. Uh, let's see here. Everything. I was going to say, I think we all got that. One of us. Okay. Yep. Um, superior achievement in a YA novel. The winner was, and I again, as I said when we were betting on who would win, I, I apologize for the mispronunciation, but I believe it's Zonde for Oware Mosaic. I am sorry to tell you that we all suck. We all got <laughs> that, one wrong. Got that yeah. one. We have a nobody one category. Okay. Nobody. We are bad. We are bad humans. We all should read this book now. Okay. And finally, superior. No, uh, you should have two. Oh, yeah, you're right. Two. Uh, superior <laughs> achievement in a first novel. Yep. Sarah Reed, The Bo Bone Weaver's Orchard. Oh. <gasps> Damn you all to hell. What does that mean? It means everybody but me. <laughs> all right. And finally, superior achievement in a novel, Al going back, Coyote Rage. Dun, 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 dun. And the winner is not me. I'm bad at this. Uh, Mary and Dave tie for first place. Woohoo! No, wait. Mary has 0. 0.5 more. <laughs> I call shenanigans. Oh my god. Mary's point tie is the tie. Dave, Dave, you were the one who said, let's give her half a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you want to take that back, Dave? No, you know what? <laughs> she can win because, you know, if I get free out, I'm just going to waste it. So, you know. You guys might actually give it to somebody that deserves it. I'll, I'll, I'll just like get my local cheese steak place and add or something. So, all right, um, all right. So, so I do think there. that from, I, here's, but we do this from now on. You have to make a decision. Yes. You okay. Can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't pick a what tie. You, you can't say, uh, well, I think any one of these five are going to win, so I'll just get a fifth of a point in every category, <laughs> and you know, and then with space math, I can, you know, not be in the porter potty. I don't know. <laughs> So, Mary, your prize is two weeks in the porter potty. Enjoy. <laughs> I think someone should write the short story Space Math. All right. Space Math. So, Mary, you uh, you get with me off the air and figure out who you would like to give that advertising to, and I will get in touch with them, and, and we uh, we will work something out. Okay? I just want to okay, point out you. that I got eight right, and I was recovering from stomach removal surgery. So That's I, right. I, What's that say about me, Okay. Yeah, well, I don't, I'm not going to comment. Actually, you live with Bob, so that's, a, a, that's nicer, a mental handicap right there. Because <laughs> I'm a nicer person whose hopes and dreams aren't completely squished yet, and I thought some people would win because they should, not because they would. Uh, and yeah. Have you been out of your house ever? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I'm just trying to get a view of real. That this is some just really twisted dream that I'm stuck in. I'm still eight years old somewhere. It's not real. Yeah, it is. It's real and it sucks. Welcome to the world. We're we're referring to um everything before Corona as BT. You know, there's BC and AD. Now we have BT because it's before times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> before times, and then we're going to have AC, which is going to be after COVID. Mm. But then you've got that pocket of hell where we are currently sitting, waiting. See, I, I do HS for had a stomach, you know. That's, <laughs> how, that's how I measure time. Well, like, seriously, I mean, that kind know. of coincides. No, but it's really close. It was so, a really well. You so know. the four times works for your stomach, too. But it, like I said, you know, define idiot. The guy who gets okay, his stomach removed just in time for the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. If we're stomach, then we can say it's BS. Yes. Well, yeah, that's that's for sure. Before because, stomach. <laughs> yeah, before stomach. Yeah. Before stomach. Before not stomach. All right. Well, speaking of BS, should we get to the news? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Um, first story is, of course, porta potty? do what? Did you run out to the porta potty? Yeah, I did. I did. Thank you. Um, first story is, uh, of course, the fact that the comic book industry continues its wholesale collapse. Uh, that is not a hyperbole. Yeah. It is. It is happening in real time, folks. Um, Marvel Comics has now told even more freelancers and creators to stop working for the foreseeable future. Uh, what does that even mean? Means stop. I mean, but they're not, they're creators. Creators don't just quit. We just don't let other people have it. Well, no, if you've been contracted to, let's say Matt gets a gig writing the next six issues of Black Widow and he's, two issues into scripting his run they're they're not saying you have you can't go work for anybody they're just saying stop working on black widow but he has a contract for six yeah but right now there's no way to sell them but he can always just do them and be done with them and then they're sitting there waiting nope they're being told uh you know pencils down stop stop working do they get paid for the two they've done I I would imagine it depends on which publisher you're talking about and who the creator is. And also how the contract's written. Mm-hmm. Right. Does that lift the um the the part of the contract that's also all, usually that non compete agreement? Can they go and work for other people in the meantime? You mean like if they have an exclusivity you mean like agreement? Gambling? Yeah, like if they have an exclusivity agreement. Is uh, that like nulled for the time being? It, again, it would depend on which company you're talking about and which creator you're talking about. This is pretty much every comic company right now has some variation of a work stoppage because nobody can get comic books. Because as we've discussed in the last previous sh- two shows, uh, you know, the, the printers who print the comic books are shut down and the sole monopolized distributor for comic books, Diamond, is shut down. Um, Nobody can get comics to their comic stores. So even if you uh, work for the enemy, Mary, they're not shipping either. Yeah. But, but and, here, maybe this is a naive question. Why not uh, put them online then? Because then you gut every comic book retailer in the world. Oh. Yeah. But when the yeah. pandemic's over, why am I going to continue to go to Comics Connection in New York or Camp Hill if I can just get it on Comixology? Yeah, good point. Okay. If you take away the retail outlets and say, okay, here's the only way you can read comics, you're, you're, you're going to, that's going to be the final capstone in the industry. Um, which leads into the next part of the story because more concerning is the announcement this week that both DC Comics and Alterna Comics have ended their relationship with Diamond. Now, remember, Diamond is the only distributor. What? It's in fact, Monopoly. Yes, you can get graphic novels through Random House and Ingram, but we're talking about actual physical comic books. And we're talking about comic book stores, most of the vast majority of whom rely on Diamond. Okay. Uh, Alterna is now going to sell directly to retailers. So we'll use Bill and Ned at Comics Connection for an example. Uh, if they want to carry Alterna comic books in their stores, Instead of ordering through Diamond, they will now go directly to the publisher, Alterna. Uh, DC caused a much bigger uproar. DC Comics are going to use two brand new comic book distributors that have been set up by comic book retailers. Uh, Midtown Comics in New York City, they are involved with something called UCS Comic Distributors. And uh, the online comic book store, DCBS, has set up something called Lunar. Okay, so follow along. These are two comic book retailers who have now set themselves up as distributors (laughs) to other comic book retailers. So it's the equivalent of a writer creating his own publishing house. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, But in the retail world, it, it... could give them some say it could give them an unfair advantage well it's more like a bookstore creating a publishing house right yeah no no, it's 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 actually neither and nothing against either one of you but i don't know that i like either of these analogies it's like 
It's an orb, it's like, no matter how you look at it. It's like Random House saying to Macmillan, we're going to go ahead and distribute your books to to all the other bookstores. Oh. Okay. I so mean, my take on it, if you yes. own a comic book store, this is just a clusterfuck for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. Now, now there's, now there's different billing cycles and different terms and, 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 you know, and this is nothing against Midtown. They've always treated me very fairly. I did a signing at Midtown years ago, but you know, uh, if, if Midtown can get an extra discount from DC versus the other retailers, it benefits Midtown. You know what I mean? Right. right. Um, now DC comics has said, that they will ship comic books to stores next week. Diamond is not shipping until the earliest next month. Uh, But DC are going to ship comic books to stores next week. Now, this increases the clusterfuck because not every comic book store in America or or the UK or elsewhere is going to be open next week. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm like, how is that supposed to work? Yep. The bigger ones who do online sales and ship to your home – I mean, are they still doing that or are they not doing that because they're avoiding post office? No, they're doing that, but they they can't get new comics because Diamond distributes the new comics. This is a clusterfuck. Yeah, it's an absolute clusterfuck. Uh, the, the entire industry is collapsing. Um, it is not hyperbole. The comic book business will be vastly different when this pandemic is in our rear view mirror, it will be yeah. vastly, vastly different. You know, some people are saying it's the death of comics. No, it's not. Uh, it never is. Um, but I, I think in the future, we're probably going to see a lot more creators doing it on their own. Um, yeah. you know, and I think we're going to see a lot more of the, the small presses, you know, like uh, like Dark Horse or Antarctic Press or Oni or Dynamite doing what Alterna is doing here. Um, of course, the big elephant in the room is will Marvel do anything to match DC? Um, you know, that that's the that's the big question. And nobody knows yet. Um, quite you're frankly, I don't think anybody at Marvel knows either. <laughs> There's also DIY comic and graphic um, novel programs like you know how um amazon's acx uh lets you do your own audio right you go find the person and then they they put it out there for you after you do all the work of putting it together and then they keep most of the money um (laughs) there's one of those four comics and graphic novels oh yeah i mean there's all kinds of things but i know that there's at least one because i was looking at getting waiting out winter turned into a, a graphic novel and somebody steered me towards that and i didn't do it yeah, there's there's all kinds of things like that you can do. I mean, we've we've talked on this show about, you know, the success creators have had with Indiegogo, with Kickstarter. Um, you know, uh there there's all well, kinds of stuff. Isn't the, this isn't the money portion of it. This is the actual like the file formatting and and all of that to create it and then print it uh through Amazon, I think. Was the one yeah. that I was told about. Yeah, I, I I don't think much of those programs. Um, I didn't expect you did. Simply, simply because comics, comics is a very open marketplace. Literally, you know, anyone can do it. Um, but to do it right, I think you got to you, you got to have an artist who's knowledgeable. You got to have a writer who's knowledgeable. Um, you know, the 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 programs you're talking about, it, it's it's open. To the point where someone who's never read a comic book in their life but has a novel out decides, oh, I want to turn my novel in a comic book, can do that. But it, it doesn't always result in a good comic book. You know what no, I mean? no, and right. I'm not talking about what? those people. I'm just wondering how many who are getting hurt uh, throughout this are going to turn to things like that. I don't know. We, we shall see. Um, like I said, the, the, the big thing here is going to be what kind of move is Marvel going to make? Uh, Marvel has a very close relationship with Midtown Comics. They always have. Um, it's curious to me that DC 
is using Midtown's UCS comic distributors, and Marvel has not announced that they are. Um, so, mm-hmm. so we'll see what's happening. But if they already have a, if, if they already have a relationship, do they need to announce that they're still in a relationship? Well, I mean, they have a relationship in that, you know, lots of, of Marvel freelancers sign at Midtown, et cetera. You know, they they were both always New York based. Um, I'm talking about on the distributor level. What is Marvel going to do with the distribution? Right. They'd have to make I mean, I'm sure they've got to do something. I'm sure they're going to have a good plan because they got all those Disney dollars backing them and everything. So, well, yeah, right. Um, they've got a whole new generation of people that actually care about some of their characters because of the movies. Right. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Uh, but I do have some good news. Oh Um, my God. (laughs) (laughs) That exists. Long long time listeners of this show. I know that we have something here called the blacklist and to get on the blacklist. You have to be a real fuck up. Um, you have to be a publisher who, who we have proven, who we have documented is engaged in some major level malfeasance, or you have to be a creator who we've proven, who we've documented has engaged in some, some major league bullshit. Um, and then we put you on something called the blacklist. Um, today I'm announcing we're doing something called the green list. Okay. And the green list is actually a good thing. The green list is something that you want to be on. Um, Yay. you know, it, people have been asking me all through this pandemic, you know, what, what do I think is going to happen to publishing? Um, and I, I've told them, I don't know. Uh, but my gut tells me a few things. Uh, one thing my gut tells me is, you know, this small press business model of allowing Amazon, and Ingram and Lightning Source to handle all of your printing, warehousing, and shipping of your books, that is going to become a thing of the past. Um, you know, and and we're already seeing that happen. Um, you know, we're we're seeing small presses instead of just linking to their books on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, they are actually warehousing their books, they're processing orders on their websites, and they're shipping the books directly to customers. Um, I think moving into the future, you're going to see more and more small presses doing this because when this pandemic is over, okay, um, you know, Amazon is going to absolutely gather all the data from this period and they're going to adjust their terms and conditions to reflect how they can better profit in the future. And that's what any for-profit corporation would. I'm not saying Amazon is evil for doing that. That's any corporation is going to do that exact same thing. (laughs) Um, Bottom line is Amazon makes more money off Kindle and Audible editions than they do off of print books. And if they're making more money off Kindle and Audible, eventually they're going to decide, hey, why are we taking up warehousing space with all these books and paying the shipping costs to mail them to our prime members, you know, that warehouse space can be devoted to something else. Um, as I said, we're already seeing this unfold. If you tuned into last week's episode, we talked about the trouble that Valancourt Books is experiencing. Amazon delisted them, um, and they can't get their books back up on there. Um, so publishers and their authors are already taking a direct hit from this thing with Amazon. The other main revenue stream that we all rely on is physical sales at conventions. Um, now, we've already seen the cancellations of StokerCon, WonderCon, Scares the Care Wisconsin, and MoCon. Um, and Nikon. This week, well, as I was getting ready to say, this week uh, it was announced that ReaderCon, Nikon, and the biggest one in the room, San Diego Comic Con, have all also canceled until next year. Uh, you know, San Diego Comic Con is an economy all of its own um you know and and this would have been nikon's 40th anniversary so you know those are two big losses right there uh that leaves convergence scares the care williamsburg and killer con as the only three big horror cons for the rest of the summer and while there's no official word yet 
it is absolutely reasonable to expect that all three of those conventions may announce a cancellation as well. Disclaimer, I am involved on the board of directors for Scares of Care. I'm also involved in the Splatterpunk Awards for KillerCon. I'm not speaking out of turn. I don't have any insider information. As I said, it would not be unreasonable to expect that those conventions may announce a cancellation at some point here as well. Okay. Bottom line, that is a second gut punch to authors and publishers who rely on direct sales via conventions uh, because they were hoping for those conventions to make up for the sales they're losing on Amazon. Now they can't do that. Mm -hmm. So for the last week, what we've done here at the show, we put together a list of publishers and booksellers who sell and ship their books directly, meaning you can buy books directly from their website and have them ship directly to you, independent of going through Amazon, independent of going to conventions, okay? Um, the bottom line, listeners, if you want to help your favorite authors, if you want to help your favorite publishers, then the way, the best way to do that right now is to order directly from them. There are authors selling their books directly. Matt, I know you Tweeted the other day, if, if folks want to DM you or email you, you you know, they PayPal, you, you'll send them a book. Uh, Kelly, yep. I believe you're still selling books as well, correct? Well, yeah, because I have all the stock that was supposed to go to Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, you know, now I do not have a list up of authors that are doing this because it would take me about two months to put such a list together. There's so many authors doing it. Basically just um, ask them. Yeah. But – I, I do have a solid list of over 25 publishers, each of them. I link to their website, and it's so easy. You go to the website, you see who they have, you order it directly from them, you pay them directly, they ship it to you directly. Well, Brian, I don't get free shipping like I would with Amazon Prime. Bullshit. Valancourt Books is offering free shipping. Same as you would with Amazon Prime. Um, and so many others are doing that as well. Uh, I mean, so even I, so, even if you're not getting that free shipping, that extra couple bucks you spend for the shipping, you're still helping out an author that you care about. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Now, I'm not going to read out every URL. Um, go to briankeen.com, <laughs> click blog, scroll down to the green list. Okay. But, you know, Apex, Athis Arts, Camelot Books, Cemetery Dance, Centipede Press, Clash Books, Crossroads Press. Dark Delicacies, Death's Head Press, Fahrenheit Press, Haverhill House, Miskatonic Books, Necro Publications, Neon Books, Nightscape Press, Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, PS Publishing, Sinister Horror Company, SST Publications, Swan River Press, Subterranean Press, Thunderstorm Books, Valancourt Books, uh, Raw Dog Screaming Press, so many more. Why did I just rattle all those off? Because I guarantee you, listener. You have their books on your shelf mm -hmm. from at least at least one or two of those publishers, mm -hmm. and you probably bought them on Amazon. And you didn't realize, oh, I could just get it straight from the publisher's website and really help them out right now. And that's what we're asking you to do. Take five minutes, peruse that list at BrianKing.com, and, and order something. Um, in addition to all of these, uh, Crystal Lake Publishing tells the horror show, quote, our new website will launch within the next month, and then we will also have an online store so we can sell directly to the readers. Um, you know, so they're they're going for that. Uh, Grindhouse Press, Carrie reached out to us. She says, uh, due to some health issues, she has had to stop trips to the post office because, you know, she's high risk. She's got to limit her exposure. But she would like fans to know you can still buy Grindhouse merchandise, T-shirts and cell phone covers and the like. Uh, via a third party, just go to grindhousepress.threadless.com. Um, Rooster Republic, while they are not yet selling their entire catalog directly online, uh, they're taking steps in that direction. They're selling illustrated special editions in both hardcover and paperback of their new anthology, Not All Monsters, uh, via their website. Um, you know, I, I talked to other publishers, uh, Eraserhead Press slash Deadite Press, for example. You know, currently they don't have direct sales. It's something they're looking into. You know, there's a, a lot of other publishers, good publishers. I haven't listed here, not because they've done anything bad, just because they don't have direct sales yet. 
Um, and there are, in fact, probably a few publishers that have direct sales that I haven't listed here because they're on the blacklist. Hi, Cheezine. Hi, Dark Reason. Uh, or perhaps they're not on the blacklist yet, but perhaps we're investigating allegations. Hi, Bronzeville. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, the green <laughs> don't, list don't, is what don't. you want to be on. The blacklist, not so much. But I encourage everyone, please, just take a moment. Uh, check out the green list at BrianKeen.com. Again, just click the blog tab at the top. And, and scroll down till you see the green list. Um, it's right there. And please, please, please support these publishers so that they can support their authors. Anybody have anything to add? Mary, that was well said. No, I'm good. Good. All right. Um, all right. Well, I guess that is our show for this week. Um, I want to remind folks for, I'm sorry, what? So that was exciting. It was exciting. Um, if you want to advertise on the show, if you want to book an appearance on the show, uh, please visit BrianKeen.com. Click the podcast tab at the top of the page, and you'll find all the information on how to do those things there. Uh, Mary, you're going to pick our advertiser for next week, and we'll have that. Um, I guess that's all I have. No one has anything else? No. Okay, I feel no, like we're so. we're, we're kind of ending on a. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see what do we got. What do we got? What do we got? We got something. Um, I love one. each and every one of you. I love. Aww. Aww. Thank you, Matt. That's very nice. We I've love grown. You too, Matt. I've grown fond of all of you as well. <laughs> I, just fond. <laughs> I, I, I would. I would. Recording next choose. week because I can mute him. Oh yeah. And that is why he is jackass big fuckface. <laughs> <laughs> With a porta body. He needs it. He should. All right, gang, we'll see you next week. Right, bye. 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 The Horror Show with Brian Keene is a production of the Brian Keene Radio Network. You can listen to this episode and all previous episodes for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play Music, and wherever else podcasts are available. The Horror Show with Brian Keene is written by Brian Keene and produced by Brian Keene, Mary San Giovanni, Matt Wilderson, and Dave Thomas. Our theme music is by Matt Hayward. Our engineer is Matt Wilderson. Check out his books on Amazon.com. If you enjoyed this show, you might enjoy our other podcasts, Cosmic Shenanigans, Defenders Dialogue, and Grindcast. To advertise on The Horror Show with Brian Keene, visit briankeene.com and click Podcasts.